So hello, CWA. It's really good to be here with all of you. As much as I would rather see you in person to give you a big hug hello and hit the dance floor together. But we can see the light at the end of the tunnel now, and I know we'll be together soon. We are meeting today in a moment like none before. Since our last CWA convention, we have feared for our lives and the lives of our union family members. We have mourned coworkers and our loved ones. More than 30,000 of our members have lost their jobs, most with no path to being rehired. We have fought with everything we have for every employer to respect our members' basic needs, for protective equipment and safe working conditions, paid time for quarantine, and flexibility to care for kids home from school and daycare. So if you have cried, I assure you, you are not alone. And if you have been scared, you are not alone. And if you feel exhausted, you, my union siblings, are not alone. Remember, though, that being weary is not the same as being weak. Just as being courageous is not the same as being unafraid. If you weren't scared, you wouldn't need courage. And despite everything, we have endured. As we gather here today, we're ready to fight forward and rebuild our union together. We've talked a lot these past five years about what it means to be CWA strong. We've been building our union to be ready to withstand challenges, and we have succeeded. Because if acting in the face of adversity is the definition of strength, then we are indeed CWA strong, stronger than we have ever been. I want to highlight a few of the ways our union has grown stronger since we were last together. We helped elect the most pro-labor president of our lifetimes, who appointed the most pro-worker general counsel the NLRB has ever seen, CWA's own Jennifer Abruzzo. Jennifer's stirring memos to NLRB staff open a new era for workers' rights. And we won congressional majorities however thin, that provide a path to make gains for working families. With support from growth funds, we've built a modern data operation that's fueling mobilization, activism, and political work throughout our union. We have grown our voice in the larger labor movement by affiliating all our locals with their state AFL federations, and we freed up local operating funds in the process. Together, we won payroll protection for airline workers, call center protection bills in six states, and a historic $76 million back pay settlement for hundreds of workers illegally fired by CNN. Our strike fund stands strong at $425 million, and our project funds are thriving. These funds support ambitious contract mobilizations to win gains for members, and local training in every district and sector, and breakthrough organizing in tech, banking, and at public universities. We welcome new units of Google workers, Lawrence School employees, and Denver healthcare workers. And we locked in organizing wins with first contracts at Beneficial State Bank and the software companies Glitch and Blue State. And even as we fight forward, we are making the tough choices needed to ensure that our union can survive in these lean times. We faced our financial problems head on. Over the past four years, we've cut nearly $15 million in general fund, general fund spending from our national operations. And we did it without laying off a single CWA employee. Of course, hiring freezes and cost-cutting are not the long-term solution to membership decline. We need to invest in rebuilding our union. So we are asking you, as convention delegates, to approve our pandemic response plan to support members and rebuild together. The SMART proposal allows us to hire new staff where they are needed most in permanent positions as staff reps and organizing coordinators assigned to support your locals and our members. By hiring from the money that members have already set aside to strengthen our union, we can immediately boost our efforts to win and enforce strong contracts, build union density in our core industries, and ensure that CWA has a foot in the workplaces of the future. 
Sisters and brothers, union siblings, there is no magic route to recovery. The way forward is the same it always has been. The only way our movement has ever won anything, by bringing working people together to fight for what we are due. And we must fight forward using all of our tools, member mobilization, aggressive bargaining, and whenever needed, our greatest tool, the strike. And we must fight by organizing workers, one by one, to understand that standing together is the best way to build better workplaces and better lives. None of us can do this alone, but we know that our best starting point is to bring passionate, skilled CWA staff together with local leaders and well-trained stewards. I know that we can do this. It has been a hard few years, so hard that some of you have asked whether recovery is still possible. With private sector union membership now at just 6%, it's easy to fear that these are the end times for the labor movement that we love. But labor history tells a different story, and it offers us a roadmap for the way forward. So imagine yourself for a moment as a labor activist in 1930. Union membership has fallen to a dismal 7.4%. Worldwide GDP is falling fast, triggering an economic depression like none this nation has known. Millions of families have lost their jobs, their savings, and their homes, turning to soup lines and cardboard shanty towns to survive. As a labor activist in 1930, you would have felt weary, scared, and angry. But what you wouldn't know was that a great awakening lay ahead, thanks to people just like us who fought to turn this country around, planting the seeds of a labor revolution. Depression labor activists elected FBI, Depression labor activists elected FDR. They fought to secure the sweeping New Deal that protects American workers to this day. And in 1935, thanks to tireless activism by labor organizers, Congress passed the National Labor Relations Act, which fueled double-digit union growth throughout the 1940s and the 50s, union growth that brought unprecedented prosperity to American families and created the middle-class standard of living that defines the American dream. And let's be clear. The 1930s didn't turn around because the bosses decided to treat workers better. Union leaders, just like us, made it happen through bold, aggressive organizing and collective action. And today, we have all the right conditions for another labor revolution. A pro-labor president, overwhelming public support, and a renewed understanding that we are responsible for one another's well-being. We take care of us. Most importantly, we have CWA, our nation's best union, backed by hundreds of millions of dollars, fueled by thousands of first-rate stewards, and armed with a militant membership who understands first how to build power and then how to use it. CWA members know that we have to be ready all the time to demand what's right. Right now, we stand in solidarity with 2,000 CWA healthcare heroes, our beloved nurses and hospital workers walking picket lines in Buffalo who are fighting for safe staffing for their patients. Two weeks ago, 2,000 of our members at Frontier in California who were working past contract expiration walked off the job to win grievances. In August, hundreds of tech workers walked out to demand that their employer, the New York Times, respect their right to join CWA. And we will win these battles because our members are united and prepared. Just as they were for the ULP strike at AT&T Southeast in 2019, the AT&T Mobility strike in 2017, and the 45-day Verizon strike of 2016. We are CWA strong when we build on tried and true strategies, and also when we find the courage to try new things, like doing the math to prove to investors that hedge funds not only hurt workers, but they also actually reduce the future earnings of their corporate targets. These Wall Street vultures are flocking to our industries, 
but we're fighting them off and we're doing it with their own weapons. We are CWA strong when we unite in the understanding that racism and sexism, that all forms of bigotry can no longer be allowed to divide us. When we commit ourselves to action knowing that, as our executive board clearly stated, the only real way to dismantle racism and build the working class power we seek is for every worker to take on the struggle for justice for black people in this country as their own. We are CWA strong when we push on with courage and solidarity and hope no matter what. Every day we are writing our own story, one that will be told and held up as inspiration to generations of labor activists after us. And we will keep fighting until our story has a happy ending so that when our children and grandchildren read the history that we're making today, they will learn how the 2020s were the time when CWA led the way to rebuild our labor movement. I am so proud of all of you, the heart and soul of our union family. Often we don't know our strength until we're tested, and it's in tough times we learn what we're truly capable of. We have seen you as local leaders and activists step up even as the pandemic spiraled out of control. You didn't hide from the challenge. You fought for safety, PPE, and paid time off for black lives and voting rights and democracy itself. And now it's time to test our newfound courage and to build our union into the powerhouse that our members need, that millions of not yet workers, not yet union workers need, that this nation needs. I love you all and I'm proud to stand with and fight alongside every one of you as we rebuild together because we are CWA and when we fight, we win.